Uh, today I'm going to do an example of uh, stone coursing with uh, fiber cement siding. And I'm also going to weave the corner so that you don't actually have to use a corner board here. Uh, the first thing I do, um, we usually we install a, a band board, uh, you know, just a, a belly band all the way around. And then I'll install a flashing over that. Uh, that flashing is actually going to make it so that any water that comes down uh, this uh, hardy wrap will come out onto the surface of the flashing rather than uh, go behind this band and potentially freeze or get soaked up by the fiber cement. Okay, I've already uh, pre-bent these flashings. Uh, they're just uh, regular aluminum flashing. Now I like to uh, I like to bring the flashing all the way out to the corner and then I'll run one edge straight and then the other edge uh, I'll miter over it so it gets a nice clean look. This is just a regular aluminum flashing that we bend up on the brake. Uh, you can get this pre-bent from a lot of places, but I don't know, we are what we've always field bent it. I'm going to make just a little incision here so that I can fold this uh, house wrap up so that I can slide this underneath. couple nails to pack this into place. I'll do the same thing on the other side here. The difference is I miter the end on this so that it'll overlap this end so that it's not a straight shot. Uh, now that that flashing's in, uh, I'd like to square these corners up. Um, this is a 7 16 OSB over 2x6 framing. So the manufacturer actually uh, recommends um, that you get one inch of continuous contact. Uh, in order to do that, I've got to actually nail into the studs, and I've pre-marked where my stud locations are. Um, and I'll draw some lines down that in a minute. Uh, but because, again, because it is regular framing, this corner is not perfect. You can actually see the sheetings don't come out and hit each other perfectly. Uh, so what I do to square that up, just so that it's easier to do layout, I'll take just a piece of metal flashing again, I bend it into a perfect 90, and I'll just sit that right on top of this corner. I'll square that up, and then I'll just tack that in place, and that'll give me a nice square corner to work on. And the next thing that I do, take a piece of the hardy and I rip it down to an inch and a quarter and then I use that for my starter strip and I keep that back a little bit from the corner because I want any water that gets in here if it does happen to settle on top of this I want it to be able to drain out somewhere so I'll leave a little opening at the corner and then where the two pieces butt together I usually leave a little opening and then I keep this up a quarter inch I actually use my spade or my uh, speed square to keep it up and I keep it up off the flashing that way, uh, if any water does come down and gets past this, when it comes down onto the flashing, it doesn't sit and soak back up into the panel. For the stone coursing, we actually have to use panels that are two different widths. Uh, we use a standard seven and a quarter inch, uh, and then to make the smaller one and a half inch reveal, uh, we actually rip that down to a five and a quarter or a five inch, uh, depending on how the panels are laying. Um, this saw is equipped with a hardy blade or a fiber cement siding blade. Uh, it actually only has a few teeth on it. If you look, they're spaced very, very far apart. Uh, what that does is it makes it so that it produces less dust as you're running it through. 
and one edge of the uh, fiber cement is actually beveled and that's for water to drip off the face of it. So we're going to end up putting that against the fence here and then I'm going to adjust this fence so that I've only got that five and a quarter inch reveal. So I'll take this, I'm going to set this up, slide that fence right over to where I need it so my mark line's up there, lock it down. The angle that has to go on the edge of the panel in order for the corners to weave up is a four degree pitch for this application. So I'm just going to set my saw at four degrees. The bottom edge of the panel is the long edge. So I'm going to make sure that that edge is at the bottom of the blade. And then we're just going to start. So I'll run that through at my four degrees. And now that edge has the correct angle on it so that when we lay it up against the wall, they'll miter up. Uh, most important step is after it's cut, before it goes over into production, that it gets that first coat of paint. Because uh, that coat needs a little bit of time to dry before you can get that second coat on there when it goes on for the field install. We uh, take our panels and I make sure that the edge is painted. Uh, once before we get it and then right before we put it on, I'll put another coat on that edge just so that I know it's really sealed up well. Because uh, this edge is really going to be the weakest part uh, because it doesn't have the factory finish on it. So I like to make sure I get at least two coats. I mean, if we get the opportunity, I'd even put a third coat on it. Now, well, I've already gone through and I've pre-cut the angle on these. And uh, if you look, we're going to be we're tight here at the top, but at the bottom it's actually pitching out, and it's pitching out even with that starter. Um, the reason that we do that is that's how we'll get that woven corner. So I'm going to start by bringing this up again, uh, setting my square so that I know right where it's going to sit. Oh. Put my first nail there, come down here, and I'm going to space it up again. I got another stud right here. And I got another one right here. I'm going to make sure that those set nice and flush. Uh, it's really important that they're flush. If they stick out at all, uh, they'll not only cause the uh, next course up to flare out, but they'll also prevent this course from pulling down nice and snug. If you look, right where you're nailing is right where the panel actually crests and starts, or starts to come off the wall. And you're putting pressure and it's driving that down nice and snug. The uh, next course that we are going to be installing is a five and a quarter uh, inch panel, which, but we're going to use it as a one and a half inch exposure. I'm just going to line the bottom of these two up. Install my spacer down at this end. Okay, that feels nice and snug. Get that first nail in. Okay, there we go. For the next course, uh, the overlap is going to be one and a quarter. Uh, and I know that I want an inch and a half of exposure, uh, or well, an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half of exposure for the stone course section. Um, so what I do, that's a five and a quarter or a five and a quarter inch panel, plus my you know six inch exposure down here. So if I measure up uh, just eleven and a quarter, and I put a mark there, and I go to the other end and I do the same thing, that'll tell me where the top of this next course is. I'm just going to tack a nail in here. And, uh, you could do this with gauge blocks, uh, but we found that uh, we couldn't, we were having a real hard time with gauge blocks that were, you know, the one and, a, one and three eighths or one and a half inch exposures or one and a quarter inch exposures. So we just did the math and figured out where they have to sit. So that's the top of that one.
paint that edge, make sure it's got a really good thick coat on it. Even though only about an inch and a half of this is going to be exposed. I'm going to bring this one out so that this edge sits just a hair proud of that edge. it up with my blue line. I'm going to check the corner to make sure that it lays out right where I want it. That looks like it's going to be a good overlap. For the next course up, I'll start on the opposite side. That way the laps end up so that they're not all on the same side. So now this course I know I want a one and a half inch reveal, which is going to put me right there. And I know my panel is seven and a quarter inches, which is right there. If you uh, take a look at that, you'll see it's an eight and three quarter inch panel height for the next course up. Emphasis on how important it is to paint this edge. Bring this in to where I want it. Drive that in. We got another nice tight joint. The last thing I do whenever I do any uh, project with fiber cement siding, uh, I make sure it's nice and clean before we move on to the next area. And then I touch up any little blemishes uh, that may have happened from handling the panel or uh, just anything that would be you know, unsightly to the customer. And like I was saying before, we just use a uh, touch up pen. And it's, uh, it's a color matched, but the sheen is different. So uh, you only want to hit just any little mix or any little scuffs. You know, they're all little superficial marks. But I like to get them all touched back up so that it looks perfect for the customer. Uh, there you have it. That's how we install James Hardy fiber cement siding in a stone coursed reveal with a woven corner.